Free Ride 2008, King Lake Fine Farm Studio. Now, you might think that a realm populated by laborers who could hoist up something of the size and weight of a full grown elephant, if need be, and who could haul around a draft horse all day long would have led to many wondrous machines to tap into the qualities of the menfolk of the mere dragons and their also impressively strong dragon women. And you would be wrong. The kings and queens of the kingdom quickly discovered that the qualities of the mere dragon body tended to overwhelm the primitive technology so that tried to harness that endurance and strength. Galley oars and windlass poles snapped from excessive force applied by the mere dragons who did not know their own excessive strength. When iron cranks, handles, and levers were employed, the blacksmithies were kept busy, employed repairing the overstressed iron works. Or if it wasn't the crank or pole, that snapped axles spinning overly fast tended to glow red hot set smoky fires to their tar and grease wooden bearings or as not flames shooting out of the hot boxes as then as the guys kept on cranking away and barely noticed the safety brakes and clutches that were tried to dampen their excessive enthusiasm at manual labor. So when the human inventors of the late 16th century took up the challenge of the mere dragons to develop machines that were, could withstand the excessive horsepower and torque forces applied by the mere dragon labor, they found it wasn't so easy to match up a technology to the massive quantity of power available to them. These fellows had come up against as the problem that still plagues mere dragon technology innovation to this day, which meant folks such as my mother's grandfather and her father were a valuable resource in the mere dragon's chronic war against the problem. So it's hardly surprising uh, that in 1756 the bureaucrats rejected my mother's application to join her future husband on the immigrant liner. They wanted her to stay here in the family business rather than go mucking about 2,000 miles away, pulling rutabagas out of a farm field. My granddad, from my mother's side, even offered to set my dad up in his own manufacturing business, or to get him a job in the kingdom's bureaucracy or financial system, if that's what dad wanted. However, Dad was set on that farm of his 
in the new world. In the end, the impasse was broken by a mere dragon family friend, Henry de Lufus, who offered to emigrate along with Dad, Dad's family to the new world. As a gentle giant promised to build the structures and what equipment he could on Dad's farm so my mother could make use of her untapped knowledge of mere dragon technologies to set up a small manufacturing facility in the upper Canadian colony, a facility my industrialist granddad could help her with. And so in April the 3rd, 1757, Mom, Dad, my future Uncle Henry, and the rest of the gang boarded the Dragon Galley K.N.I. Frederica at the Groningen Dock, where she lay berthed. 